Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install new tires and wheels on your car. So the video today is actually going to be probably a pretty easy video. If you're a beginner to cars and everything, this is going to be a good way to start off your learning experience. If you haven't ever taken a wheel off your car, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to jack the car up in the air. I'm going to show you how to change your winter wheels to your summers. And also I'm going to give you a couple tips and everything once you have your wheels off. So the first thing you should do is get your car and park on a nice, even ground surface so that you can jack the car up in the air without the car rocking once you have it up in the air. Next, open up your car. Make sure your dog is chilling in there with you. Come in here and then turn on your emergency brake and have the car in park. So it's in park and for my car, the emergency brake is right here. So you just come here, kick it and make sure the pedal stays at the bottom. All right, so these are the tools and everything that we're gonna need today to get this job done. Now this is an impact gun. This is what we're going to use to take off the lug nuts on top of each one of the studs. Now if you don't have an impact gun, you can use a breaker bar and it'll do the exact same job. Just the impact gun takes a little bit less time. Now you're going to need a proper assortment of sockets. Now this is the proper socket I need for my car, but you know it's good to have a bunch of them because not every wheel is the same. After that, we're going to need a torque wrench. This is what we're going to use to properly tighten the wheels back onto the car. We might need some copper anti-seize, and I'll explain in a little bit what that's for. A light to inspect uh, your brake mechanism, and then some cloths should you need it. Coming down here, I've got a jack that's rated for this car. I've got two wheel chocks, and I've got some jack stands. Now you don't need all four, you can get away with either, either using two or four. Now if you guys want, you can jack up the car all at one shot, and then use all four of your jack stands to get the car in the air. But I'm gonna pretend like I only have two because not everyone has four. So what we're first gonna do is we're gonna grab our wheel chocks and we're gonna go to the other side of the car and chalk the wheels to make sure that they don't move. Because when you jack the car up in the air, you're gonna be repositioning it and angling the car a different way. So we're gonna put one chalk before and one after one of the wheels. Now this side is going to be the side of the car that's going to be staying on the ground first. We're going to be jacking up this side over here. Now I'm going to pretend like I don't have an impact gun. Now not everyone has it, so I'm going to be using my breaker bar or Johnny bar, whatever you call it, and then I'm going to attach my, what is this, my 13 16 socket on this, and I'm going to loosen up every one of these lug nuts. Now you don't want to take them off completely, you just want to make sure they're so they're loose enough that you can untighten them by hand once you have the car in the air. So, just crank like that. Do that to all the wheels. And then afterwards, you're gonna be making life a lot easier because once you jack up the car, it's gonna be really hard to do that if you're doing this job on your own. Now, if you have someone else with you, if you want, once you get the car in the air, you can have someone press the brake and do this, but I find this to be the easiest way. So, do that to both of these wheels, this side and the other side. Now after this, you're gonna have to jack the car up in the air. Now if you don't know how to do that, there's an easy way to find out how. Now you can Google it, but I find the easiest way is to find your owner's manual, search up the back for tire removal or something like that, tire changing, and it'll show you the steps on where you can position your jack so you can safely jack the car up in the air. If you put your jack in the wrong spot and you try and jack it up, odds are you might break something. So. Better be safe than sorry, check the book, it takes two seconds and you'll have good peace of mind afterwards. Now I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up but I'm going to try and show you guys this anyways. So I'm on the driver's side front end of the car and I'm going to be positioning the jack so it's underneath this mount. This is where you place your jack and afterwards you're going to place the jack stand right here on this pinch weld. You're going to put the jack one knob here and one knob here and it's going to make sure the car is secure. Now you don't need to jack up the car unnecessarily high. All you have to do is make sure that you have enough room under here so the tire can easily come off. Place your jack underneath. And if you have to, change it so this is higher. Now safely put the car down by just spinning the jack handle uh, counterclockwise and it should lower onto that position. With the front and back in the air, what we can do now is we're gonna grab our breaker bar along with the socket and then we're gonna loosen and take off these bolts. Now we already loosened them up, 
Now, right now, you should actually be able to hand tighten them or hand loosen them off the car. Now, when I take them off, I like leaving the bottom one on last. So like, you can loosen it, but make sure that you keep this one on last because this wheel is gonna wanna fling out and fall off if this is gone. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, if this wasn't on, if I were to remove my foot, it would wanna fall off the hub and then maybe hit the brakes or something like that. So if you want, put your foot here, and then with this last one on, loosen it up, keep your foot there, and then you can grab the wheel. Like I'm gonna slowly back off my foot, you can tell it's gonna wanna fall off. Now something that's very important in the winter time is before you put your winter wheels on, you wanna make sure you put on that 3M copper anti-seize, the stuff that I showed you before. This makes taking the wheel off a heck of a lot easier than not putting it on. Now, as you noticed, when I took that last one off, the wheel was able to move. If you don't put that stuff on the back of the wheel and on the hub, this is gonna be, I guess, fused or, fused or rusted on, and it's gonna be a pain in the butt to remove. You'd have to get something like a rubber hammer, a rubber mount, and bang this thing off so it will loosen off, and then you can take the wheel off. You can tell that there's still some of the solution, the 3M anises, on there along with the back side of the hub. Now this over here would have rusted to this steel, making this almost impossible to remove. So that's why this stuff is very important. In the summertime, it's not that big of a deal, but in the winter, when you put the winter wheels on, it is very crucial to put this stuff on. Now after the winter, you can grab your inspection light and come in here and you can inspect a couple different things. You can take a look at your brake rotors, your brake pads, your suspension, you can see if there's any big rust or anything that could damage, I don't know, any of your components or make driving unsafe. Now with the light, you can come in here, inspect everything, make sure everything's okay. So we're actually good to go and put the summer wheel on this car. If you guys have directional wheels, you wanna make sure that you put the right wheels on the right side. Now what directional tires means is that the tire is designed to only spin in one way so you get optimal traction. What that could mean is that you're endangering yourself and others if you put it on the wrong side. Now your car will want to hydroplane easier, you won't get as much traction, so make sure you do the right thing. On a directional tire, you'll notice a little arrow pointing in the proper direction of the way the wheel is going to spin. Grab your summer wheel and mount the wheel onto the hub. Put your foot at the bottom of the tire so the wheel won't want to fall off. Put the lug nuts back onto each one of the threads by hand. Now this is very important so you don't cross thread each one of the lug nuts. After each lug nut is on each thread, you can start to tighten your lug nuts down a little bit tighter with the socket. I like hand tightening everything up, up until the point where you can't turn them anymore. After the front driver's side's done, you can do the exact same procedure to the wheel in the back. With both wheels on this side of the car on, we have to lower it and tighten them up properly. Now keep in mind, we only hand tighten these lug nuts, so these aren't very tight. So what we're gonna have to do now is we're gonna have to lower the car only so that there's enough weight that the wheel doesn't spin, and then we're gonna grab our torque wrench along with our socket and tighten these up properly. Now with the jack still supporting the weight of the car, you can tell that the wheel is touching the ground. Now you wanna make sure you do this because you don't wanna to put too much stress on either the drivetrain, so you like your transmission and engine, or your emergency brake. So with it like this, grab your torque wrench, put it to the proper spec, and tighten these while putting the lug nut on the farthest available spot as possible. So whenever you tighten one, always try to move away to the farthest available spot. So you're kind of like doing a star shape if you have a five lug pattern like this. So you go until you hear the click. If you don't hear the click, keep going. Just like that. And keep doing that for every lug nut. Repeat the same thing on this side to the opposite side of the car, and you've basically changed over your winter wheels to summers like that. Now just to play on the cautious side, I like to do two extra measures. Now after I've got the wheels in the car and I torque them down with the torque wrench, I'll take the car, go down the street, you know, go for a little drive, come back, and then torque the wheels again just to make sure that they're at the proper spec. After that, what I like doing is grabbing a tire pressure reader to get the readings on each one of these tires. Now, I like to make sure that they're all at the proper spec. A good way to find out where the actual tire pressure, the PSI reading should be at, is inside your door. The driver's side door, there should be like a little sticker, and I'll tell you what the proper PSI should be for each tire. Now, they depend on tire size and 
tire, everything, but you can find all that information on that little sticker inside the door. A lot of cars nowadays, what they'll have also is a tire pressure monitoring system built into each one of these wheels. Now a lot of companies, what they'll want you to do is after you change your wheels over from say your winters to summers or summers to winters, these new tire pressure sensors have to be relearned if you've got two different sets. Now there's one of these sets inside the winter wheels and there's another one inside these. My car, I don't know about this one, but my Honda for example, you've got to get it relearned and reprogrammed at the dealer. So you can have all this done and everything, but after, once you get inside your car, you might have a light that's flashing. It might say TPMS, it might say ABS, it might have you know some different code, depending on how the manufacturer sets it up. But what you gotta do is get your car, bring it down to say Nissan, Honda, whatever, and get them to relearn and reprogram it so everything is working properly. What these tire pressures do is they read the tire pressure inside every single one of these wheels and they relay it back to a central computer inside the car. It makes sure that all the wheels are spinning at the same speed and the same air pressure so you've got good fuel efficiency, good handling, and good tire wear throughout the car. Don't forget too, when you get back inside your car, that you've got your e-brake, you push it back out again, so it's off, and uh, yeah, you get in the car, take it for a spin. Just taking sushi for a ride. Doko, what do you see outside, huh? What do you see? Yeah, just making sure everything's good, so we're taking this thing for a spin, get the car warmed up, make sure the wheels are on there good, and then when we go back home, we're gonna get back in the garage and torque the wheels down to 83 foot-pounds, just like we did the first time. She loves car rides. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about you, I know. Get careful, we're slowing down. Careful. All right, guys, we just got home. We're gonna park the car. Let's, have, let's turn this down for a second. So we're gonna go park the car and we're gonna make sure everything's on there good. Right? You gonna come? Okay, okay. Okay, let's go. The last thing you'd want is for one of your wheels to come loose while you're driving, so double check everything. Grab your torque wrench and set it to the spec found in your owner's manual. For this Nissan, it's 83 foot-pounds. Go over all of your lug nuts again in the star pattern to make sure everything is tight. The lug nuts probably haven't loosened too much, but it's better to play it safe than sorry. Alright, so guys, just like that you can change your wheels from your winters to summers in no time. Now, first step, I kind of missed out. What you need is a little helper. Right? Don't go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, please post them in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.